And this matter I've talked about on radio many, many times, and I wrote an entire book on it called The Liberty Amendments. At some point, hopefully in the near future, other states will join the six states that have already passed joint resolutions for a convention of states under Article 5 of your United States Constitution. And again, under Article 5 of your United States Constitution, please pull it out and read it. You can Google it, you can read it in my book, wherever you want. There are two ways of amending the Constitution. The first way is federal government driven, where Congress, a supermajority of both houses, two-thirds, must propose an amendment to the Constitution. It is then sent to the states for ratification by three-fourths of the state legislatures or conventions of the states. That's been done, and that's how we have our 27 amendments to the Constitution. There's another way that has not been done. It came close a couple of times, and this is the way uh, that George Mason, a delegate from Virginia, a crucially important founder, proposed, and the uh, framers at the Constitutional Convention agreed, as did all the state delegates who ratified. It's a slightly different approach, but crucially important. Instead of Congress proposing amendments, the state legislatures meet, and they have a meeting which is called a convention of states. Not a constitutional convention, as the fear-mongering opponents argue, a convention of the states, a meeting. It's the sort of meeting states used to have before there was a constitution, and when there was an Articles of Confederation, and even before the Articles of Confederation, states would have meetings and get together and make some joint decisions. Well, this has been somewhat formalized in Article 5 under the Constitution. So what happens? Well, you need enough states to get together, two-thirds, state legislatures, to agree to the general subject matters that they want to discuss at this meeting, this convention of states. And the state legislatures send delegates. They agree to how many delegates they're going to send, and they've been meeting several of these states to agree in advance, and so far they've agreed two from each state. And they meet under these proscribed conditions where they can discuss certain general subject matters, and they don't amend the Constitution there. They debate these issues, and they come together, and they may or may not propose amendments to the Constitution. Those proposed amendments, just like if they're coming from Congress, still have to be ratified by the same number of state legislatures or a convention of states, three-fourths. That would be 38 states. It's not an easy process, and yet it is a crucially important process. You want to know why? Because it bypasses the federal government. The president may have a pen and a phone, but it's irrelevant. Congress may think it has this massive power to control all aspects of our life. It bypasses Congress. The courts might think they have a role in this. The courts have almost no role in this. It's you through your state delegates and state senators. They're in control of the process. Now, the most powerful question, or at least the questioners think it's the most powerful question that I'm asked about this is, well, Mark, if the federal government is not going to follow the Constitution as is, why would the federal government follow the Constitution as you want it to be? First of all, it's not as I want it to be. It's a decision that will be made by you through your state legislatures. But the answer is actually quite simple at least when it comes to the reform amendments that I'm suggesting. They're not chiseled in granite, but just, just put out there as, as, uh, as things to, to project from. The answer is the states will have more and more authority. Whether the federal government listens or not, the states can act and act legitimately under the kinds of amendments that I am proposing and so forth. And so there are really two ways to address what Needham and I and others have talked about which is this entrenched ruling class that does not respond to the electorate, which is the entrenched federal judiciary, which of course doesn't even respond to its constitutional requirements in too many instances, which is this entrenched army of bureaucrats, which creates three to 6,000 laws every single year, in which you have no say in, and you probably don't even know what the vast majority of them are. Number one nonfiction book now for three straight weeks. The Liberty Amendments Restoring the American Republic to look at the Constitution for answers. I believe this is the only way back. And all the people that say, what can we do? This is the answer. Constitutional attorney Michael Ferris has launched Convention of States.